chickens are heavy. Hi, I'm Sierra, and in this series, we'll learn about the relationship between animal agriculture and the environment. Birds. There's a lot of them. A total of 50 billion. That may sound like a huge number, but the number of chickens slaughtered every year for human consumption is 70 billion. Chickens don't weigh much individually, but their whole population adds up to a humongous biomass. Basically, the weight of a population measured in the element carbon. The biomass of chickens is 5 million tons of carbon while all wild birds together weigh a measly 2 million tons. So, the biomass of all chickens is more than double the amount of all wild birds. If that comes as a surprise, consider the humble history of the domestic chicken. Chickens are descendants of the wild red jungle fowl, a native species to South and Southeast Asia. In the wild, jungle fowl only lay eggs during a food abundance in the breeding season. About 8,000 years ago, chickens were first domesticated for fighting. By 800 BC, Romans started breeding them to produce more eggs earlier in the season. Now, most chickens lay eggs almost every day. Before intensive farming took off, chicken meat was a luxury. That changed in 1945 when supermarket chain AMP partnered with the USDA to launch a breeding contest for the ultimate meat chicken, the chicken, the chicken of, tomorrow. of tomorrow. They did indeed create the chicken of tomorrow, the Arbor Acres White Rock, now the most common breed of meat chicken worldwide. The industry calls them broilers, and they're severely obese. They can weigh up to six pounds by slaughter age, six weeks old. Over the past 50 years, they have experienced a 300% increase in growth rate. Now, over 70% of the world population of chickens live their whole weeks-long lives in factory farms, never seeing sunlight. Chickens, at the will of humans, sit on the throne of bird biomass, but they're undoubtedly not happy being at the top. And chickens are but one species that, due to humanity's selective overbreeding, have gotten way out of balance. Biomass history tells a dire tale of humanity's rapid domination of other animals. The total biomass of livestock is 100 million tons of carbon. Before humans overhunting catalyzed the mass extinction of megafauna, they consisted of a large portion of wild mammal biomass. 40 million tons of carbon. Now, the biomass of all wild mammals is just 7 million tons of carbon. Fish have also been impacted by human activity. 100 million tons of carbon of fish have been lost due to fishing. That's more biomass than all humans alive currently. Humans have a history of prioritizing livestock over wildlife. 150 years ago, Passenger pigeons were the most common bird in North America. Flocks of billions of birds would blot out the sky as they migrated. Unfortunately, this humongous population came with a ravenous appetite, and farmers would shoot them because they ate their crops. These birds were basically viewed as feathered locusts, and they were all dead by 1914. More recently, in many states, including Montana, Idaho, and Wisconsin, ranchers have been lobbying state governments to allow them to cool wolves. This hunting has so far disintegrated an entire pack in Yellowstone. Humans have been discounting wildlife for the sake of agriculture, and even more so recently with the ever-increasing demand for animal products. The disproportionate biomass of livestock is a telling demonstration of how humans have exercised our dominion over wildlife. Currently, 83% of wild mammals and 50% of plant species have gone extinct due to human activity. We are in the sixth mass extinction. Over the last 50 years, the destruction of wild habitat for farmland has been the main cause of declining biodiversity. Since over 80% of farmland is for animal agriculture and it is rapidly expanding its reach, animal farming has been the main driver of the destruction of Earth's biodiversity. Biodiversity hotspots only take up 2% of Earth's surface now. The majority of them exist within developing tropical nations. These countries are accelerating their meat production, and projections show they may need to increase their animal farmland by 3 million square kilometers in order to keep up with demand. That's a larger area than Argentina. It gets worse on a global scale. In order to meet future supply trends, 
we need to increase our farmland by an area of 1 billion hectares. That's larger than the area of the United States. However, if we switch all our current farmland to crops directly for human consumption, we could feed an additional 4 billion people. That's more than the projected population of 2050. Deforestation is one of the culprits of biodiversity loss, and almost all of it occurs within the tropics. In Brazil, 72% of deforestation is for cattle pastures. In all the world's tropics, 41% of deforestation is for cattle pasture expansion. The worst cause of deforestation after cows is oilseed crops, one of those including the infamous soybean, 75% of which is fed to livestock. The loss of important habitat to animal agriculture has affected ecosystems around the world. Over 90% of the world's large carnivores are threatened by habitat loss and conflict with humans. Because animal agriculture is one of the largest drivers of habitat destruction, it is the main existential threat to the world's most iconic animals. When wild carnivores decline, the whole ecosystem goes out of balance. 60% of the world's large wild herbivores are threatened with extinction due to resource competition with livestock. Grazing livestock can also affect river ecosystems, causing vegetation loss and erosion. This affects the quality and habitability of waterways for wildlife and humans. Currently, there are about 3.6 billion domestic ruminants like sheep and cows on Earth. Each year for the last past decade, 25 million more are added to the planet. This population increase caused by the rise of animal farming has threatened wild animals with habitat loss, competition with livestock, and extinction. Besides animal agriculture caused deforestation and habitat degradation, just maintaining our current levels of animal farming is taxing on nature. Animal agriculture is the leading cause of habitat loss, water and nutrient pollution, and Earth's decline of biodiversity. In order to have healthy biodiversities on our planet, we must drastically reduce or eliminate our meat, dairy, and egg consumption. Animal agriculture's disproportionate effect on biodiversity hurts people and ecosystems, but it also offers a glimmer of hope. We can identify this threat to biodiversity and start to reduce it. By rewilding just 15% of the world's farmland, we can conserve 60% of the species expected to go extinct. If 30% was rewilded, 70% of the expected extinction would never occur. Well, half the carbon released since the Industrial Revolution would be captured by the native flora. If the world were to go plant-based, 75% of our farmland wouldn't even be needed at our current population. That would give an area the size of United States and Brazil to possible rewilding. Imagine having that much more nature in the world. We need to escape the extinction vortex caused by this demand for animal agriculture. By moving towards a plant-based world while healing exploited landscapes, we can create a kinder, more beautiful planet.